you, we have whole generations that because of the desires of these forces that the king, the father, and the banks, that we are seeing birth rates plummet for lots of variables. But I think this is, this is one that is so hidden that, that it, I think sometimes it's directly the king. I think even like some of the schemes that are coming up today where, for example, the government is saying, we're going we're gonna to forgive student loans. You know, what's interesting about every one of those decisions when the government gets bigger like that and says, you know, there's, there's no cost. It's just magic. In exchange for forgiveness, we're going to spin straw into gold and just take all that away. And what, what people so often don't understand is there's an unintended consequence every time the government grows like that. And it always is, it always is borne by the family. In other words, oftentimes people might say, well, is that the best thing that could possibly happen if the government were to just get, make everything free and we were just have, you know, a lot of taxes, but, but everything would be free, then wouldn't that cause people to want to have more children, right? And this is one of the basic misunderstandings about the nature of why people want to have children. People are always saying, well, maybe if the government provided free daycare and, you know, it and forgave all of our loans and, you know, gave us universal basic income. The main reason why people have children is not because it is or isn't financially feasible. Believe me, 18 years of constantly serving children is, is never going to make financial sense. It's always going to, to be a, a massive cost financially. And there's nothing the government can do to really, uh, to, to ultimately lessen that enormous cost. But what they can do is take more meaning away from family. And that's what they consistently do. So it used to be that, that there was so much meaning in family, but I think that so many of these forces of the king, you know, the academy, the corporation and the government has really stepped in to provide more meaning than the family. And so now ultimately it's, it's the government that's going to provide for you in old age. And it used to be a meaningful relationship between, uh, generations that would create that. Now, you know, it used to be that there was lots of, you would need to interact. You would have your children with you all throughout the day. This was a big part of your experience as a parent. Now the government's like, no, 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 we'll, we'll take that away from you as well. We'll educate your kids on and on. You can, you can look at all the services that are provided and every single one of those, every time the king steps in, it, it lessens the birth rate. It lessens the amount of meaning that people have or experience when they have children. And we constantly are thinking of this as primarily an economic problem, but it's not. It's primarily a meaning problem. When you see that children are maximally meaningful, then you're willing to take whatever hits you need to take to have children early and often. But once there are the forces of culture or the forces of debt, the things that this, this fairy tale are really describing, once those things really begin to cre recreate the incentive structure, then all of a sudden it, it really saps the meaning out of, of, out of having children, saps the meaning out of family. It takes away those heirlooms. And now all of a sudden you are left with, why, why should I have kids, right? So, so th this is much deeper. And this is one of the reasons why I love fairy tales is that they actually, they show inter interrelated, very complex concepts boiled down into symbolic form. And this is why I think this story has persevered for so long.